here we go with another whitetail project. Um, it seems like um, the first whitetail video that we uploaded was quite interesting for a lot of folks. So this is the this is the second one. Hopefully, I'll be able to uh, put out some more video for you guys. So as you can see, I'm going to be roughing up the ear liners right now. And uh, again, this video is going to be speeded up in areas that I think it doesn't need any um, instruction to be talking about. And I'll slow it down in the critical area so you can see better. With the stout rougher, we will get the uh, ear liners quite roughed up for better adhesion. And uh, with thinning down my Bondo with some extra resin, I'll make it a lot more uh, stronger and more basically um, like thinner to be able to spread it inside the ear pockets. I do like Bondo as an ear adhesive, it works really well with or without ear liners. Some, sometimes uh, I will eventually demonstrate a video of how to create an ear liner with Bondo only, or basically uh, Bondoing the ears, leaving the cartilage inside. But this video we're, uh, we're using regular ear liners, plastic ear liners. So I usually like to put a little bit of a Bondo inside the ear pocket and massage it very well all around the corners, make sure that we got that adhesion happening every corner of the ears and um, doing that it just ensures uh, better adhesion to the to the ear liner then I pull out the ear skin kind of like a inside out a little bit halfway inside the ear liners I apply a lot more glue steadier spread all over the corners and and the back of the earliner I only go a little bit thicker um, application but only halfway through because I can squeeze it out toward and the earbuds putting the earliners in and start massaging and taxing the skin all around make sure and tr make sure trying to feel the glue underneath your hands when you're spreading it on in, uh, inside the skin so all to the edges especially into the uh, dented area like I mean into uh, inside the ears where there is uh, um, low spots in there make sure that it is going to um, to stick to the earliner as, as as best as you can handle it and in the meantime when you're massaging the ears make sure that you're lining the hairs properly because it helps a lot for having the hairs on the ear uh, laying down in the right direction so for the second ear we'll speed up the video a little bit because you just saw it what's happening in the first ear we're just repeating the same process for the second ear yeah using a little bit of wire brush works really well now the bondo has set we'll clean up the excess bondo that has been squeezed out and try to create a little bit of an ear butt with the clay with the big roll around the butt and then pushing it inside the skin and try to model it from outside just to create a good transition from the ear liner into the ear butts there is multiple ways of doing the ears and I try different ways every time but they all end up with the same scenario and same result. Sometimes I build the earbuds on the mannequin, sometimes I build it on the ear liners, sometimes half-half. So now I'm quickly showing you how to apply the, uh, the height paste all around the main part of the neck 
because we are about to um, pull the skin over the mannequin right now. I usually like to cover the whole neck area, not the shoulders. I'll do the shoulders later. And then as you can see I like to wrap a little bit of a plastic wrap around the face to make it more slippery when you're sliding the skin. Pulling the skin over as soon as the head gets exposed I'll stop and start installing the antlers. little bit of a plastic wrap going around the face make sure that the pieces of dried mache doesn't fall inside the skin I don't like that to feel a little bit of a clump underneath my skin without me noticing installing the antlers that we've designed I mean sorry we, we have uh, adjusted before for a proper angle Make sure that it's all level. If it needs a little bit of a raise in the back or in the front, we'll do it with pieces of ice cream sticks or anything else like that. Any kind of piece of wood would do it. And then we'll cover the whole skull cap with mache. Try to make it as smooth as possible and a uniform on tour. I like to make my mache that it sets within 10 minutes and then I can uh, carve out the excess with a little bit of a mm, tool that I made I don't know what would I call it or just some um, some knives I can just uh, work around the burrs as soon as I feel that it's smooth enough I get started in installing the eyes. I like to have a thin layer of clay inside the eye sockets. And then a little ball of clay inside the back of the ear, uh, back of the eyes for a better adhesion to that little bit of clay that we put in there. So as you can see eyes are going in with a little bit of an angle forward and a little bit of an angle downward. You can see it better on the left eye because it's better in front of the camera right now. Make sure the pupils are parallel to the ground. Keep adjusting it till it's uh, the way you want it. I suggest uh, having a little bit of a level handy so you can make sure if the eyes are level or not. And uh, I usually start with leveling the head first before I level the eyes. So at first I noticed that my head is not 100% level. So I adjusted that. Now I'm adjusting the eyes, make sure that the eyes are level. Little bit of adjustment needed. Now with pushing the pin into the nose and measuring the distance from that pin to the corner of the front eye, will tell you if, if uh, you've installed your eyes to the proper length from the nose so they're not back and forth in different lengths. And I usually like to fill out the gaps that are still there, although tiny, between the eyes and the form. I fill up that gap with a little bit of a clay before I start building my eyelids.
starting the eyelids from the top lid again you'll see a better um, part of the video on the on the left eye because it's, uh, the other one is just kind of like covering covering it by my own hands anyway due to the ca uh, camera angle I start with a roll of clay going over the eye and try to smooth it out over the top of the eyes and having this I feather it out to have the very easy and smooth transition from that clay to the top of the form where the eye, start, eye socket starts. We are getting very close to the end of this segment of the video and um, we will probably upload the second video either tomorrow or the day after. These videos are in HD quality so they're quite big in size and they take quite a bit of a time to upload them into um, onto YouTube. So anyway after putting uh, building up the both top eyelids I go back to the other eye to create the lower eyelid and that's a much smaller roll of clay as you can see and we feather it out quite a bit more couple of uh, small rolls on top of the tear ducts will help you close in the tear ducts later very easily after you tuck in the skin and I really like to add a little bit of a clay to the nose on, on some of the white tail forms that I buy just gives it a lot more smoother finish after you work the skin on and also um, to finish off the nose and the lips it helps a lot feeling the clay underneath your skin when you're mounting the animal is different is much more pleasing than just having a hard rigid foam okay thanks for watching video number two is coming up soon